If you're anything like me, you probably stumbled upon this YouTube channel before. It's called Free Blue One Brown. I've been watching his videos over the past week, and I wondered, how does this guy make these super sick animations? Well, it turns out that guy, aka Grant Sanderson, is behind the whole thing. He created Manim, which is a mathematical animation engine, which in regular English means it's just a bunch of code just compacted together into a few simple Python commands to make animations super easy. So let's begin with a few ones that I've learned so far so you can begin making your own animations as well. First and foremost, in order to start coding Manim, we are going to need to have Manim itself installed as well as a code editor for it. I will be using Visual Studio Code for this purpose since it has this really nice plugin which shows you the changes you make to your animations in real time. I will of course leave links to Visual Studio Code as well as to all of the Manim installations in the description down below and once you figure out all of this process that goes into installing it, you will be ready to go. It's really simple. You just paste all of these commands that you have right here into your terminal and everything should be all right. Just if you're on macOS, don't forget to install Homebrew first. Okay, so once you have Manim and Visual Studio Code installed and Visual Studio Code opened, you want to go to the extensions on this left side. Over here, we want to install the Python extension. When you type in Python, it's going to be the first one and you just hit install. And the second extension we want is Manim and once you type that in, it's going to be the only one here. So Manim side view, install that as well. And if your Visual Studio code looks a little bit different, like for example, it doesn't have this transparent layer over it or anything else, don't worry, those are also just extensions and you're going to be fine with continuing this tutorial. So once you have both of these installed, we are ready to go. Let's close the extensions and close this file. So to create a brand new file, you want to go up here into file and new file. This will open up a menu and you want to choose Python file. Now we have to determine where this file actually will be in our computer because Manim will save all of the animations and videos into the same folder as this file. To save it really quickly, we are just going to hit Command or Control S and this is going to open up the saving menu. Now, I highly advise that you go into your desktop because it's pretty much the easiest one to find and you will be looking for your videos quite often. So let's create a new folder. Let's call this tutorial for myself. You can call it whatever. Let's hit create and let's name our first file. Well, first file. <laughs> It's that simple. Now hit save and we are ready to start coding. Okay, let's start with typing in from manim import and this little star. I don't really know what this does, to be honest. It probably imports something, but you are going to need this at every single Manim file that you create. And now let's create our first scene. In order to do this, you can just paste in these two lines. I will leave it in the description, but if you wanna type it out, because you are going to be creating these every time you want to create a new animation. Okay, so type in class, and now we can name this file, anything that we want. Let's say that we wanna name it just demo1. Now do a couple of brackets and scene, double dot or whatever this is called. And in the second row, we are going to type in def as define, now construct. And in a couple of brackets, we are going to put in self and a double dot again. So this text right here is going to be present in every single file that you create with Manim. This first one is going to be at the beginning of every file and this second one is going to be at the beginning of every single one of your animation scenes. From what I've learned so far, the things you always need to do in order to animate something is to define the object and then give it a command. So let's start by defining some text. Let's name it T equals and do text because we want text and do brackets and inside of these brackets you are going to need to put the text you actually want to display. So let's do some quotation marks because every single text is basically a string. That's what you call it in programming language. And now inside of these quotation marks you are writing strings. Our first string aka text is going to be well our let's say our first text. And now we have successfully defined our first object. Now let's do something with it. How about we make it appear on the screen? In order to create anything or make it disappear or move it somewhere, it always starts with this self.play command and you do a couple of brackets and in the brackets you specify which command you want to use. One of the basic appearing commands you could say is simply write and do another pair of brackets and put in T as our variable right here with the name. After you have written this, you have successfully now created your first animation. So let's actually play it. 
And you do this by not this running command right here, but next to it is this kind of green arrow around a red circle. So let's press that. And now we will choose which of these scenes that we have here we want to play. So we only have one. So let's play demo one. And as you can see, it starts calculating stuff and it will display our first animation. And you should be at this point too with everything finished. The first thing you will notice is, well, that looks really cool for just a couple of commands. And Manim is all about this. Just a few commands to get the animation that you need. But the second thing that you will probably notice is that it's repeating over and over again. To stop this, you simply click on it. Let's actually find where this video is at and when we go to our finder and we go to desktop and now we can see that tutorial is here and when we double click it you see our file this is our python file this is this code right there and when you go into media videos first file and you can see 1080p by 60 and over here is our first video and when i press spacebar and actually play it it's the exact same thing. It's just one loop of it. How do we make this video a bit longer? It's really simple. What do you want if you would have liked the text to stay a little bit longer on the screen? Well, you can just wait. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So let's write self dot wait. When you put empty bracket somewhere, it means that it's using the default value for it. And the default value for wait is just one second. So when we play our whole animation once again, and we kind of re-render it, it will write the text and then stay on the screen for another second. And when we go back to our finder window with all of our animations, just give me a sec here. Uh, we'll go into videos first file 1080p. And when we play it now, you can see that this video changed too. And it's also two seconds long now because before it was just one second long. And if you want to wait a little bit longer, you can overwrite the default by just putting a number here and it will wait in this scenario for another three seconds. Okay, so those are kind of the basics on how you can make your first text appear on screen and to let it wait for a minute. The second thing that I wanted to show you is actually how do you get rid of this text? Let's say that we want to write our text Text, then let it stay on the screen for three seconds and then kind of let it disappear. In order to do this, we could just select this and hit control C and then control V, but that's way too many clicks. And one thing that programmers really hate is just wasting their time. So I'm going to show you a quick method that you can use in Visual Studio Code, which is going to make you 10 times faster. And that's by hitting control Z, we get rid of that. And now when you hold down option or alt if you're on Windows and you move your arrows up and down, you will be actually moving the code up and down. And that's all nice and really saves a bunch of time. But what if you want to duplicate the code? That's also really simple. You just hold Option or Alt and hold Shift at the same time. Now a down arrow will duplicate the same line down. So we are going to duplicate it like that and now just pop it under the wait command. But we don't want to write it again. Instead, we want to unwrite it. Most of these animations that you have in Manum actually have this kind of like a negative style where you unwrite something. So let's actually play our animation and let's see what it brings up. So it just writes the text, waits for its three seconds as we specified and then goes back. So we can stop that. And also if you have a bunch of animations and you don't want to watch through all of these, you can actually just scroll through this like through a normal YouTube video. Okay, I'm going to show you a few more cool commands that you can use in order to write your text onto the screen. Write is kind of the default one that pretty much everyone uses who uses Manim, but I think it's also the coolest one. Another one that you can use is for example, example, create. This one will do kind of like a popping effect. And when we load it up, you can see that our text is just popping one letter at a time. And we didn't change the unwrite feature. So it's going to unwrite itself this time. You can also use uncreate if you want to do it in the reverse order. Another one that you can use is add text letter by letter. And as you can see, Visual Studio Code was so nice and it even gave us a suggestion. In order to apply this, you can by the way, go up and down with arrows again. And in order to kind of paste this in, you just hit tab. And now when we play it, we will see that our letters just pop in one letter at a time, kind of like a text writer effect. By the way, the reverse one for this one is an add or unadd, it's remove text letter by letter. And when we decrease the weight amount, we don't need to write one because one is the default value. 
And now when we come back, it's going to write it and unwrite it again. Those are kind of the basics of the animation styles that we have. And now when we put three in there, let's stop this. Let's actually customize our text a bit. The first thing that you're probably going to think of is color. And that's exactly the first thing that we are actually going to do. In order to demonstrate this a bit better, you will see in a second, I would just put back in the right commands. So right and let's do unwrite. Okay, so there are two ways to change the color of your text or any kind of element. And you can do that by hitting comma and Visual Studio Code is actually going to give us a bunch of suggestions of what we can do. But at the start, you will probably just remember a few of them. So you can search through this later on when you're more knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. So let's actually change the color. And it's as simple as typing in color equals and doing a color of your choice. You can do this by simply passing in, for example, red. Most of these colors are already there. That means Manim comes with it. And if you wanna use a Manim specific color, you need to use big capitalized letters. So red is red, or if you want to do blue, for example, let's play that. And as you can see, our text is gonna be blue when it finally loads. But there's a slight issue with it, if you noticed. The writing animation is still in white. And that's because we only changed the color of the actual text itself and not the writing animation. So instead of doing that, we are going to hit dot and now set underscore color and a couple of brackets. And in these brackets, as you can see, it's once a color. So let's put in blue again and let's play our animation. Once it loads, you will clearly see that our writing animation is also blue. This little dot right here basically means modify this element by whatever command you put right here. And if you don't like the default colors that Manim gives you, you can actually use your own. You do this by going to your browser and opening up Google and typing in color picker. This will give you Google's default color picker. And let's say that we want, for example, a nice kind of like teal color, write this one, and you want to copy this hex code that you have right here. We are going to copy that really quickly, head over to visual code, and now we will delete blue, do a couple of quotation marks, and paste in our hex code. As you can see, my letters over here are already colored because this is some kind of an extension that I have that lets me see the color itself. And now when I reload this entire animation, our text will be actually the color that we specified. So that's a way you can use custom colors. Let's say that we want to customize our text a bit more. And the first thing that probably comes to mind is the font of the actual text. So we are going to do comma, font equals, and now what sort of the fonts do we have as an option here? In order to put in a font, you again do some quotation marks, and now we have to find the fonts itself. If you're on Mac, it's really easy. You just search up your font book, and when it opens, you will see all of the fonts that you have installed on your Mac. And you can just copy the name itself and put it into VS Code. If you're on Windows, I'm not really sure how to do this. Really just copy the name from somewhere. And if you don't have any fancy fonts and you would like some, I highly recommend that you just go to their internet and type in fontshare.com. This is pretty much the best free website for actually good looking fonts. So let's head back to visual code and let's type in, for example, let's do comic sans MS. That's a really popular, really nice font that everybody likes. It's kind of a meme to be honest, but as you can see, our text just changed to that font. Another way to customize it a little bit more, you can, for example, play with the weight of the text. And if you type in bold, again, in full caps lock, it will now display the text as full bold. And you can do a million more things to the text itself, but I wanted to show you how to customize your text by just adding in more variables. Okay, so this is the very first tutorial that I'm doing with Manim. If you would like to see any more, just let me know. There's a lot to cover with this. Check out Free Blue One Brown in order to see all of the amazing things that you can do with this extension. So hopefully this helps and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.